Welcome to today's Global Connections program. I'm Bill Miller. What role do forests play in combating climate change as well as providing the livelihood for millions of people around the world? How do forests affect basically all 6.8 billion people on the planet? We'll be back in just a moment to talk about these and other very important issues. Welcome back to our program. Today we're going to focus the spotlight on forests. Forests are out there, but we seldom at times do not think very much about them. They touch our lives, but we're not quite sure how. My guest today is someone who's very knowledgeable about forests and many other parts of the climate that are important to all of us. Mr. Stuart McGinnis is the Director of Environment and Development with the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. Previously, Mr. McGinnis worked with the World Wide Fund for Nature, WWF. He has 22 years of forest conservation and management experience, 13 of which have been field-based in Tanzania, Sudan, Costa Rica, Mexico, and the United Kingdom. Mr. Stuart McGinnis, welcome to today's Global Connections program. Thank you, Bill. I appreciate you being with me today. Let's talk a little bit about the IUCN, the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. What exactly is that? When was it formed? Why was it formed? Okay, well, IUCN is a membership-based organization, and we've got three categories of members, states, United States, Switzerland, Liberia. Um, we've got about 85 states at the minute that are members. Uh, government agencies like parks departments, water authorities, forest, uh, forest authorities, and then non-governmental organizations, big ones like Conservation International and the Nature Conservancy, and small grassroots ones working in countries like Ghana and Tanzania. And really this is a, it's a unique uh, environmental network, a unique environmental democracy. The members get together every four years. They debate the hot topics, the major issues concerning the planet and uh, conservation, and pass resolutions and set directions on what, what way we should go. Mm -hmm. Now you say the members get together, are you talking about the member states or your regular membership? If I wanted to be a member, mm -hmm. I could join, is that correct? Yeah. I could go to IUCN.org and sign up? Okay, well, no, our members are organizations or states. Or states, okay. So you've got, so all 1,100 members, be they states, government agencies, or NGOs, they get together. But in addition, we have got six expert commissions and they focus on, on particular areas of conservation concern. Um, perhaps the largest one is the Species Survival Commission, and they're particularly well known because they do the assessment of a species, uh, species and threats to species and produce the, um, the relatively, relatively well known IUCN Red List of Endangered Species. But we've also got commissions on environmental law, on uh, ecosystem management, um, on uh, environmental, economic, and social policy. So, and so these these are ten thousand scientists and social scientists, and they act as individuals to do some of the cutting edge knowledge and thinking that we need to move forward on conservation policy and practice. Mm -hmm. Now, these environmental issues are extremely important to all of us. Everybody is affected by the environment, and I'm sure that many viewers would like to go to IUCN.org and get more information. Well, let's talk, we're going to talk about forests primarily, but not specifically or through the whole program, but this year, 2011, is the International Year of Forest as decreed by the United Nations General Assembly. How did this happen and why is this important? Um, it's, I think we're at a unique point in time really with, with forests. Um, back about 20 years ago, there was a lot of concern about the, particularly the rainforest and, disappear and the, the, the fact that the rainforest was disappearing. And then all of a sudden we sort of, we had a period, a, a hiatus. Uh, there was still some interest, but if you look at public sector funding going into forests, it, it declined significantly. All of a sudden then over the past 
three or four years, there's been a realization that forests are actually a lot more important than they were being given credit for. Not only are they, they house um, up to 80% of terrestrial uh, biodiversity, I, biodiversity that lives on land, but they're important for carbon sequestration and for, for livelihoods. And it was really the climate issue that people realized that we're, we're really in trouble. We cannot meet um, our aims and ambitions to avoid dangerous climate change if we don't find ways of curbing deforestation and using forests. And I think that gave the impetus to really put the spotlight back on forests. Mm -hmm. And so that was the main yeah. thrust behind it. Well now from January 24th to February 4th, 2011, mm -hmm. the United Nations held a major forum on forest. What, what it was the purpose of the forum on forest and what were some of the ideas that came out of it? Well, the United Nations Forum on Forests has been a, a, a standing body now since uh, the year 2000. Um, it gets together once every uh, two years. And it, uh, so this was one of the scheduled meetings. Uh, and the focus on this, of this particular session was really looking at the issues uh, pertaining to forests and rural livelihoods and human well-being. Um, and so there were, and so the focus was very much on what do we need to do to really ensure that forests can be deployed in an effective way to support rural people, uh, contribute to poverty reduction, uh, enhance livelihoods, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Well, that's an excellent segue into let's focusing a minute on forests because, as I mentioned in the opening, I think we take forests for granted. We know they're out there someplace. Mm -hmm but most of us do not go to the forest very often, or if we do it, maybe for a vacation yeah. or something like that. But let's talk a little more about why are forests important? How many people, I, I've seen figures that something like 1.6 billion people glean their livelihood yeah. from forests, 60 million indigenous people live in forests, but what are some of the other reasons that we should learn more about forests and help to preserve forests? Okay. Well, in one way, we, as you said, Bill, there's 1.6 billion people who, who, who directly benefit from forests. But the truth is, every, all, uh, almost 7 billion of us are forest-dependent people. If we didn't have forests, we, uh, we wouldn't have fresh water. Um, or we wouldn't have a, a, a climate regulation system. S um, and so forests are just so important in many ways. But I think you bring up a very good point. They have been underappreciated and they've been undervalued. Um, now, what we, what we know about forests um, is that 1.6 billion people make their, make their living from that. But we've just done some, uh, 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 some research uh, to, to look at what does that really mean. And the figure we've come out with is $130 billion dollars forests generate $130 billion of livelihood benefits, mainly for rural, the rural poor, many of whom live in tropical countries. Now, just to put that in context, that means that forests contribute more to rural livelihoods than all of the overseas development assistance from industrialized countries, which stands at about 120 billion. So th that, that's, that's one thing. As I mentioned before, forests are also uh, the repository for 80% of terrestrial biodiversity. They store more carbon than is locked up in the, uh, in the, uh, atmosp in the atmosphere and locked up in uh, fossil fuels. So for, and of course, they deliver things, uh, ecosystem services like fresh water. The, mm. the water we're drinking here comes from the Adirondacks, and there's there's actually, and that has meant that New York can uh, can afford a minimal treatment system because you've actually got fresh, pure water coming in because we've kept the, f the because uh, New York has kept the forests in the Adirondacks. Mm -hmm. Now, your organization has done many many studies, and mm. one is the true economic aspects or true economic value of forests. And are all of these, can, can our viewers access this at your website? Can you go there to look at this, to see what the, the real value of the forests are that we, so often we just don't think about it? Uh, yes, we've, uh, so we've, we've got several reports on that. Um, and, and, and again, I, and I, I think it's, it's a very germane point that you, you, you raise, that we take this for granted. Um, it's often difficult to put a value in forests because often, the, many times, it's not a monetary value. 
But, what, but economists have other ways of looking at this. They can say, for example, what would happen if that forest was cleared? And we're working, I'll give you a little example of that. We're working in a, in a watershed uh, just north of Beijing City. It's called Miyuin. It uh, supplies about 70 or 80 percent of the drinking water for Beijing's 18 million uh, inhabitants. If that forest was uh, lost, Beijing, uh, uh, Beijing and the Chinese authorities would need to find $2 billion a year to actually replace the function of that forest. So uh, the, the, the sums we're talking about actually are vast, mm -hmm. they're significant. Mm -hmm. And do you factor in other things, for example, if a fo forest is cleared, for example, and you have a leaking situation taking place and uh, runoff, soil runoff mm -hmm. and what have you, and the fact that it clogs the rivers or the streams or farmers may not be able to, to use that soil. Do you, does that all factor into your study, into looking at the total value of the forest? Well, this specific study that you looked at, or that you, that, that, uh, that, sorry, that you referenced, um, was really looking at the direct contribution to rural mm -hmm. livelihoods. And the reason we did that was because, as I say, by 10 years ago, people would start to say, ah, forests aren't really that important for poverty reduction, for rural development. Uh, mm -hmm. The best case scenario is maybe they might be a, a safety net in times of trouble when there's natural disasters or uh, an, an economic crisis. So that we, we actually went and we started to document in over 25 countries what is the contribution to rural livelihoods. So that study's focusing on the direct contribution to poor people, uh, mainly in tropical countries. Um, but indeed, we actually have done additional studies on actually looking at the the broader values of forests, and there's been a very good report uh, launched last year um, by the United Nations Environment Programme called the Economics of uh, Ecosystems and Biodiversity, and that looks at that much broader issue of water, soil runoff, um, carbon sequestration, and there you're really talking about trillions of dollars worth of value. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, as we look, at, well, the scientists have done Im an immense amount of work on climate change. Mm. And one of the, I guess, the, the most vivid and most visible parts of climate change has been looking at glaciers and how glaciers have contracted. Mm. If you look at a glacier from 1930 compared to today, it's probably maybe one fourth the size of what it was. Do we have a ballpark figure on how much forest land we're lo losing? Are we starting to reverse this trend? I, do we have any idea of how many acres are being slashed and burned every year or uh, that type of thing? I know it's, there's a lot out there and so often you don't know if it's happening, I guess, in many cases, but uh, do we have an idea of maybe 5% or something like that? Yes, we do. Actually, we've got, we've got a pretty good idea and that's, that's improving all the time. Um, in fact, uh, last year, the uh, United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, they uh, released a study they carry out uh, every five years to try and document this. Um, we've, we reckon that we're probably losing 13 million hectares of forest um, a year. Now, that sounds a lot, and it is a lot, but one of the, the silver linings is that that figures down from what, what, what it was in the previous, uh, the, the previous decade. Um, the, um, and I think then the other thing is there's more and more forests being restored as well. So the net loss of forests is probably around 9 million <coughs> uh, hectares. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I say, but obviously a planted forest isn't as good as a uh, rich tropical rainforest, so that they're, they're, it's a little bit complicated, yeah? Mm -hmm. Well, you're watching Global Connections Television, and the opinions expressed on Global Connections Television are solely those of the moderator and his guests. We'll be back in just a moment after this very important message. Hey, this is Edward Norton for the United Nations. Here's a question for you. If you had to choose, would you rather give up one of your lungs and take away all clean water from your kids or pay a little more for a shrimp cocktail on a cheeseburger. <laughs> 